Coming up, the first former president of the United States charged with federal crimes is arraigned. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Former President Donald Trump was booked and arraigned on 37 criminal counts today in Miami, including the willful retention of national defense secrets, making false statements, and conspiracy to obstruct justice. He pleaded not guilty to all charges. CBS's Michael George reports from Bedminster, New Jersey, where Trump spoke to his supporters tonight. Former President Donald Trump addressed supporters at his New Jersey golf club hours after he pleaded not guilty in Florida to all 37 federal charges against him. Today we witnessed the most evil and heinous abuse of power in the history of our country. In his remarks, Trump railed against the prosecution. The Espionage Act has been used to go after traitors and spies. It has nothing to do with a former president legally keeping his own documents. Law enforcement was out in force to keep protesters and supporters under control outside the courthouse in downtown Miami, where Trump became the first former president to face federal charges. Once inside the courthouse, the former president, along with aide Walt Nada, who was also charged in the case, surrendered to authorities, got swabbed for DNA, and was fingerprinted. There was no mugshot taken, and he was allowed to hold on to his passport. Trump is accused of hoarding classified documents after he left the White House, and prosecutors say Trump refused the government's demands to return them. According to the indictment, the highly sensitive materials included information about the U.S. nuclear program and the military activities of adversaries. The government really has to uh, develop a strategy to use the classified documents without making them public. The former president is pressing ahead with his campaign at events like this fundraiser in New Jersey, while his legal team works on his defense. Remember, President Trump was the president. He could declassify documents under the Presidential Records Act. 31 of the counts against the former president are for alleged violations of the Espionage Act. Michael George, CBS News, Bedminster, New Jersey. Special counsel Jack Smith, who brought the charges, says he's seeking a speedy trial consistent with the public interest and the rights of the accused. And by the way, the former president will turn 77 years old tomorrow. Peaceful night tonight in terms of the weather out there. We continue to see temperatures in the low 60s and we'll continue to watch just a few clouds work into the region. Here's the view outside now from here in Hazard. The lights are on as you'd expect at uh, 2 past 11 here, 3 past 11, depending on your clock out there. This evening, we got up into the low to mid 70s out there today. It was a very comfortable day. It really doesn't get much better than this in June. I know I said that several times last week. Certainly the case today. Upper 50s, low 60s, few mid 60s hanging out out there. They'll continue to drop through the night. You see some of that shower activity trying to make its way toward I-64, but I think the air is just too dry for it to make it. So your forecast first as we head into the morning hours. Not too bad a start starting in the upper 50s to low 60s with just a few scattered clouds. Though, Steve, I'll have the very latest on when we see perhaps a return to a little bit of shower activity in a few minutes. Definitely a very pleasant evening out there. Thank you very much, Evan. It's been nearly one year now since the Allen ambush that killed three officers and a canine in Floyd County. Nearly a year of memorials and awards as the community recognizes the sacrifice, sacrifices made in the line of duty. One man who knows firsthand about those sacrifices spent the afternoon recognizing his fallen brothers. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about their medals of honor and how the mission they represent melts across state lines. No greater love has this than a man lay down his life for a friend, and you know, we take that to heart. Grundy, Virginia police officer Shane Charles was shot in the line of duty more than 10 years you ago. Know, our shooting you know, took place in 2011, and we lost two officers in, in that while they were trying to come and help me and my brother. Today, as chaplain for the department, he works with the Law Enforcement Medal of Honor Committee to recognize the sacrifice of those who well, gave all in the line of duty. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. I never want a family of a fallen officer 
they feel like they're ever forgotten about. Charles visited Floyd County Tuesday, presenting medals to the Floyd County Sheriff's Office and the Prestonsburg Police Department, honoring the officers killed nearly one year ago during the Allen ambush. We're so blessed and thankful that so many people still care and they're willing a year later to reach out and, and tell the families that we're still thinking about you and that we love you and we're praying for you and that we're going to be there for you from now on. With some family members like fallen deputy William Petrie's son I mean, Chase. Your dad was so proud of me able to accept the honor for their fallen first responder, holding to the medal and a little more. That we're not alone, my family's not alone, all these families that were affected aren't alone, that there's always people thinking about us. Seeing that the heroes will forever be honored. That people are still realizing the sacrifice they made, those, all, all of them, even the ones that made it through that night. And the thin blue line runs deep. You no longer see different shapes of the badge, different color of the uniform, you know, or what state the seal in your batch may say, you know, it's we're all brothers and sisters. As do the legacies the officers leave behind. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Those involved say it's always nice to know their heroes will never be forgotten, but terrible to know that so many departments and families have dealt with something like this. The man accused of shooting at an Eastern Kentucky police officer just yesterday made his first court appearance today. Police say a SWAT team arrested Wesley Cornell overnight in Lewis County. Court records show he's charged with attempted murder of a police officer and wanton endangerment. A judge set his bond at $1 million. The shooting happened around 3 yesterday afternoon. Investigators say Cornell shot at the officer who was sitting in his cruiser. The bullet did not hit the officer, but he was hurt by broken glass. Cornell is due back in court later this month. In Bell County, a traffic stop turned into a police chase. Sheriff's deputies say this man, Trent Brown, was stopped. When the sergeant called for a canine to assist in searching the vehicle, he says Brown drove off. Deputies were able to track him down and arrest him. He faces several charges, including wanton endangerment and fleeing or evading police. A well-known search crew from Louisiana is in southern Kentucky to help in the search for a missing man. Relatives say they last saw Ricky Griffiths around the 4th of July last year. Cajun Coast Search and Rescue will search areas in Pulaski and Wayne counties. The team includes a search dog that crews say has been very successful in recovery operations. We're typically the, the, the part of the team that handles the cold cases. Uh, you know, cases a year old or, or older because he's just, he seems to do really well at, at, at being able to locate uh, human remains over a year old. Um, you know, he, he's, he's proven himself, he has 27 recoveries, so I mean, he's, 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 on, his, he's on his job. Tony Wade says his crew could look for other missing Kentuckians while they're in the state. They operate on donations, and you can find a link to their Facebook page on WYMT.com. Raven Rock Golf Course in Letcher County is welcoming golfers again after losing its clubhouse and the Pine Restaurant in a fire. The fire happened more than a week ago. An investigation was launched into what caused it, but officials still have no answers. Although this situation may have a negative impact on the local economy, no employees were laid off following the blaze. Golf courses aren't a very profitable business. It's definitely a labor of love. Um, so to have this course in our community is a big deal, and I want to make no qualms about that. I want to make that very clear that we are reopening. Um, and when I say we, I mean the collective we in Letcher County. We've been through the flood. We've been through a fire. We're going to reopen. We're not losing our assets. Pine Mountain Partnership Executive Director Jeffrey Justice says the golf course's owners plan to build a new clubhouse with hopes of opening that in the spring of 2024. In an effort to create more job opportunities, Corbin's Pepsi Distribution Center is expanding. WYMT's Jack Demler has more from today's ribbon cutting ceremony. A project 61 years in the making is now opening its doors. I'm excited for the community because they're the ones that continually support us by buying our products and, uh, you know, drinking the things that we, we sell. Pepsi is expanding in Corbin, a move that General Manager Buddy Lewis says is a huge help to the economy. It allows us to create jobs, it allows us to create tax revenue, uh, but most of all, it allows us to continue on a trajectory of growth. 
Kentucky State Senate President Robert Stivers says the expansion helps create 85 new jobs at the distribution center, a move that is helping rebuild a hurt economy. You know, we've been hit hard by the loss of coal, Corbin, in the surrounding communities, by the loss of coal, the railroad. To have those jobs coming back, along with what we're seeing here, what we're seeing in Williamsburg, what we're seeing in Barberville, there's close to 1,000 jobs over the next year that are going to come to fruition. Stivers said there are more opportunities being created as well. It's going to be a major, major infusion of jobs, economic development, and a lot of dollars that will create other jobs. A push for economic growth, one ribbon at a time. In Corbin, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. Buddy Lewis says the new distribution center also allows for 25 more jobs at their bottle manufacturing center. Some Breathitt and Lee County residents are expected to receive better quality fiber optic broadband thanks to a grant from the USDA to the People's Rural Telephone Corporation. The corporation received a $9.4 million grant and a $9.4 million loan to provide a much needed high speed internet connection. CEO Keith Gabbard says this project will take a couple of years, but they will continue to work to give people a better connection. It takes a while to get this built, to get all the uh, permits and environmental approvals and things like that, so they're not going to be getting this next month. But uh, uh, we're going to be building it just as fast as we're allowed to build it, and it's probably going to be a four- to five-year project to get it all completed. Now, that don't mean nobody can get broadband until five years. We'll be incrementally you know, serving people as we go along. Gabbard says this grant helps people in the two counties that desperately need their services. A heated debate in the House over gas stoves. I'm Natalie Brand on Capitol Hill. Why lawmakers on both sides are fired up. And watching the potential for a few more spotty downpours later this week. Details after this.